Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem in the area of mechanics deals with the center of mass or the centroid. So you have to understand that centroid is indeed the center of mass. So it says here that a circular hole of radius A over 2 is cut out of a circular disk of radius A shown in the figure. The centroid of the remaining circular portion with respect to point O, I'm missing a T here, point O, will be, and they give us four possible answers. So they're looking for the centroid of this portion that's remaining after this is cut off. Hmm, how do we do that? Well, you have to understand the principle of how to calculate the centroid of an object, especially when it's made up of a number of things. And the equation we use for that is the sum of all the individual portions. So essentially there'll be a multi multitude of portions. So we go from i equals 1 to n, however many there are. And now, since we're dealing only with the centroid in the x direction, because there's perfect symmetry in the y direction, we only worry about the x direction, it would be the centroid of each individual piece in the x direction times the mass of that object, and we sum that all up, divided by the sum of all the masses. And of course I use small m here, might as well use small m there. There we go. So it's the position of the centroid of each individual piece times the mass of the object divided by the sum of all the masses. So we sum up all the centroids times the masses divided by all the masses of the sum of all the masses. Now, the way this works is that if we add pieces together, that of course it's a sum, but if we cut something out, that will be a negative, we're actually subtracting that item. So there's only two pieces, the initial circle and then the piece that we cut out. Now, they don't give us the masses of those pieces, so instead of using the masses, since there are disks, we can use the area instead of the masses, which works as well. So this becomes equal to the sum of all the centroids of the individual pieces times the area of each piece added up from 1 to n divided by the sum of all the areas. And of course, we probably want to put the sub i's there so it looks more mathematically correct. There we go. So we can use areas instead of mass because the mass is proportional to the area. All right, let's do that. So first of all, we take the disk. The centroid of the disk would be right at the center, which would be a distance of A away from the origin, right? That's the point O, the origin. So distance A for the whole disk before we cut out the hole. So it would be A times the mass of the whole disk, which is the area, which would be pi R squared. Now R would be A, so pi A squared. That would be the area of the disk before you cut off the hole. Now we have to account for the hole. Since the hole is missing, we're going to subtract. The distance to the centroid of the hole would be a plus a half a, which is three halves a, three over two a, that would be the distance to the centroid of the hole times the area of the hole, which would be pi times a over two squared, the radius squared times pi for the area of the hole. Subtract again because it's missing. Divide by the sum of all the areas, that would be pi a squared for the complete disk minus pi times a over 2 squared for the whole. And that will give us the centroid of the disk with the whole cut out. All right, now it's just a matter of simplifying things. Notice we have a pi, a pi, a pi, and a pi, so all the pi's cancel out. That makes it a little bit easier. Now let's go ahead and multiply out and see what we got. So here we have a cubed minus 3, 3 over 2a times a, a over 2 squared. So that would be a cubed and 3 over 2 times 1 over 4 a cubed like that, right? So we have 3 over 2 times 1 over 4 times a times a squared, which is a cubed. In the denominator, we end up with a squared minus one quarter a squared. We can simplify that a little bit more. So we have a cubed minus, notice that's three over eight, so it would be a cubed minus three over eight a cubed, divided by a squared minus a quarter a squared, which is three quarters a squared. 
And now right away, of course, the a squared will cancel out with the, the cubes right there, so we just have an a in the numerator. So coming up here to finish that off, in the numerator, we have a minus 3, I'll just write it, so we have a minus 3 over 8a divided by the numerator, we end up with simply a 3 quarters. So a minus 3 8 a, that would be equal to 5 over 8a divided by 3 over 4. So now we have a fraction divided by a fraction, which is the same as multiplying by its inverse. So this is equal to 5 over 8 times 4 over 3a. The 4 and the 8 cancel. So now we end up with 5 over 6a as the centroid of the disk with the hole missing. Is that one of the answers? And it looks like answer D has that exact number. So this would be what we're looking for. D is the answer in this case. It gives us the exact amount that we came up with. Again, you need to know the equation used to find the centroid of an object that consists of more than one piece. Here we have the disk minus the hole because we have to subtract the hole since it's missing. If we put another disk on top of this size, we would have a plus here and a plus there instead of a minus because we're adding mass, but we're subtracting mass. That means we take, put a minus. We sum up all the centroids of each individual piece, which is the distance from the origin to the center mass of each piece, times the area, which is representative of the mass, divided by the sum of all the areas. Of course, the sum for a whole that becomes a negative. So the centroid of the disk is here, that's the distance a. The centroid of the hole is this distance, which would be a plus a half a, which is one and a half a or three halves a. So we multiply that times the area of the hole, area of the disk. This is the area of the disk, area of the hole, and then you simply simplify that until you get the answer. And that is how it's done.